kill you. If it's the last thing I do. After seven long years, the newest entry, the 16th entry in the JRPG Juggernaut franchise, Final Fantasy, has finally released. And I know I'm over a month late, but I really wanted to savor this one, especially after finishing the 7 remake in about a, a week when I got it. I, I really wanted to cherish and savor every minute of this and not rush through it. None of my close friends have either care about Final Fantasy and have gotten through of this that far, so... And for better or for worse, I needed to talk about this. Final Fantasy is a franchise that has been near and dear to my heart since I was a kid, since I was playing 8 as a child, before I could even read properly. And I have a lot to say about this one, from the top tier stuff I have ever seen, to some of the most bafflingly bad game design I have ever experienced in my life. As I said, I have a lot to say here, so let's just get right into it. Also, until I get a proper webcam or something, this is the best I can really do. Microphone placement, so hope you can bear with me. Let's start with the first thing you will see in this game. The graphics. Final Fantasy is generally well known for a lot of their top tier next level graphical quality. And to say that this is no exception doesn't even come close to describing how great this can be. How phenomenal this king game can look. I've never stopped in a game so often just, just to look at things. From castles towering above you with the best brick graphics I've ever seen. Seriously, look at these things. They look fucking amazing to some of the most beautiful open field areas I've ever seen. The environment is stunning, like sometimes unmatched as far as I'm concerned. Everything in this game looks amazing, from even out to stuff like lip syncing or character models, even their mouths, which I feel like I'm alone in this, but I feel like no matter how good graphically a game looks, even some of the best I've seen, they always seem to get mouths just a tiny bit off. Is that just me? They all just look slightly wrong. There are so many occasions in this game where I would just stop, just to spend some time panning the camera around. Just sit still, slow pan, and that could keep me going for a, a surprising amount of time. I mean, the area around Martha's Rest is genuinely one of the most beautiful gaming areas I've ever seen, from the grassy fields to the water, everything here. You can get through the section like 20 minutes, I think. I was here for like two hours. Just cause I wanted to see everywhere. I wanted to look at every... I just stopped to take, just to take pictures, to take videos. It was one of my favourites. And sometimes the music and the environment will hit just right. I'll get to it later, but there are certain flaws in this game that really... That really pushed me to realize I was probably going to make a review for this and talk about it because I had to get it out. But it's certain moments like this that really pushed me to realize, yeah, this is happening. It's the second I was standing in Martha's Rest. The music hit just right in the town. And I knew. I knew I had to talk about this out. I knew this was happening. But we'll get to that. And the cutscenes can look even better. There is no better word to describe these than just a spectacle. They are a sight to behold and might be some of the best gaming cutscenes, most epic gaming cutscenes I've ever seen. The opening with Shiva fighting Titan, I cannot even describe how excited and hyped that got me. I felt like an excited stupid kid again. I was just all there for it. And the first day of playing this with everything hitting all at once was... Probably one of my favourite gaming experiences ever. Some of that might be because the game arrived late and I was tired and running on fumes, but that's besides the point. Unfortunately, in the later game, it can tend... To, a lot of the areas can tend to be more drab, dark, foggy and dull. 
I will admit that most of my stop and pan and take 57 screenshots moments, they, they were more prevalent in the first half of the game. And definitely slowed down more and more as we went on. Which kind of sucks, because I went from in genuine jaw-dropping awe of how gorgeous things could look to as and couldn't stop taking screenshots to running past dark dingy foggy areas that i didn't give a shit about sometimes later it does still deliver of course but the the first parts of this game are definitely way more of a pleasing environment to, to take in the story what you probably consider the most important thing or at least one of the most important things in most JR Final Fantasies, or even just most JRPGs in general. It takes place in a land called Velistia. A world that is being a world that is slowly being devoured by something called the Blight. And there's also these giant imposing things called Mother Crystals, which, which can provide the people of the world with magic through small shards, which can be used for anything like fire, for cooling, for all the little elemental stuff. But there are also people who can use this magic na naturally without the crystals. However, this is looked at as a curse, as a... It's a stigma, as a big stigmatized thing. In and in this world, the people who can use magic are treated as less than human, as slaves, bearing the name... Well, bearers. And of course, the other ones who can use this na magic naturally are the dominants. Vessels, so to speak, of the icons which are the summons, idolons, gfs, aeons, whatever you call them from this game, who can not only use the magic of the element assigned, but can also transform themselves into epic, powerful manifestations of these icons. And when I say epic, I mean some of the most colossal, larger-than-life, amazing things I've ever seen, kind of thing. But we'll get to that. It stars our main character Clive, a first son of the Rossfield family and sworn protector to his brother Joshua, the chosen dominant of the Phoenix. And despite problems in the world from the blight, the looming presence of a war, they seem to live a decent, cheerful, sunny life with, their, with other characters like their good friend Jill, their dog Torgal, their doting loving father who is the king of this area. However, things naturally fall apart when on a mission due in large part to a betrayal by their mother Annabella. All of his, their loved ones are slaughtered, including Joshua, who was torn apart by a new second dominant of fire, Ifrit. Which sets off the story for the game as Clive, 13 years later, sets off to find the Ifrit and take vengeance for the death of his brother and everything he held dear. Again, without spoiling anything, I think the story is pretty good. Some parts and performances are amazing, larger than life, amazing moments. There's some, there's some really like quiet touching moments that I like a lot. So I decided to sit down because easier place with the mic. L feel free to not let me know if I like better. It's uh, tough to get the place where I'm still setting up properly now that I have the face cam and all that. But yeah, let me know if you like. I'm always up for constructive feedback. Moving on. All right. The side characters honestly might be my favorite set of non main characters in a game. In, in a long time at least because you will spend a long time with them and they're characters you kind of know throughout the game and they stay with you it really is a lot easier to grow to like them to grow to know more about them and to just appreciate them more big and small characters will come and go and like i said overall i think it is my favorite cast of non-main characters for most games out there at all overall I feel like I will actually remember them a few weeks after I finish, and that's it's more than I can say about most games. The antagonists will vary throughout the game as well, and these can some of these are really, really some of my favorite villains out there. Like Benedicta might be one of my top five Final Fantasy villain baddies of all time. She is just a cold-blooded force to be reckoned with, and I loved her right from second one, and she never disappointed. But Hugo Kupka was really great too. And even when the game might drag a bit, fighting these guys, getting to f see more villains and getting to finally have a proper boss battle, and these are proper boss fights with them, it really drove me to continue on even when I didn't fully want to. Even when it felt a bit like the game was pushing me away. They can even be funny sometimes. Intentionally funny. A lot of times when games try to be funny, I don't get along, I don't get into it. But right from the start, from the first cutscenes, I actually thought this could be genuinely make me laugh. I have played a lot of Final Fantasy throughout my life. A lot. 
I really can't think of a lot of big laughs throughout the entire franchise that I've experienced. So to remember even a few in this, I think that's a win. I would say the biggest flaw with I would say the biggest flaw with the story for me is it can be a little bit too long and can tend to drag a bit. There are plenty of quests in this game that you will think are side quest material, but no, they're mandatory. At one point, one thing I cannot stand in games, it really just kills a lot of my interest in. After you do a big part, they force you to do three side quests, what feels like side quests, like, oh, you need to help these three people out, they mark them all on the map, you're not moving on until you do the three of them. I hate when they do this. If there's three things to do and you can do them in any order, you know nothing big can really happen until you're done. So you're just, it feels like you're just at a standstill until you do it. They weren't even that bad. They were fine missions, but it's just, I don't know, this this kind of thing of here, do this four, three or four things and then you can continue on the main story. It can really kill every bit of interest and momentum I have in a game, especially in a story. They did something in this in Zelda Skyward Sword, and I never went back. I still really enjoyed the less than great parts, but I can easily see a lot of people really disliking this a lot more than I did. But overall, between characters I love, even side characters, twists, turns, mysteries, it was absolutely compelling enough to keep me always wanting to push on. Also, a really cool feature to have in this game is called the Active Time Report, where if you hold down the touchpad for a few seconds, you will bring up this little glossary thing and, and you'll click on one of them and it gives you like a brief little five or six lines of information about characters, places, terminology, anything you might have forgotten or might need a little refresher on. I fucking love this. Because not everyone plays these games, you know, like somebody streamer or somebody who doesn't have to do anything else. Some people might get an hour or two of this a week. And they might not remember, and they might play other games, they might not remember every character, what's going on, what everything is, what every place is. And it's never required, it's not like you need to read these, or have something like Final Fantasy XIII where there's like a Wikipedia size entry to read that you have to go through. It's like a little condensed thing, it's amazing. I hope more games do this, I really, especially longer games, because this game is fucking long, it's probably, I think I got like 60 hours plus out of its story doing some side quests. It's a long game. It's a JRPG, it's a Final Fantasy, you, that's expected, but it feels longer than the rest of them. And I don't even mean that in a bad way. But I do think, at the very least, most people will, at the worst, find the story and the characters at least serviceable. At least, at least, at least. There are also a lot of side quests in this game. I think I read somewhere it's 100, but I'm... Don't, don't quote me on that. I, I didn't verify that in any way whatsoever. I literally saw one title of an article don't take my fucking word for it. And side quests in Final Fantasy games especially can be hit or miss. 15, I think they were the most dull as dog shit thing ever. 7 Remake, I liked some of them. But one thing I think they do here really well is more a lot good giant chunk of these side quests you do get from the side characters that you spend a lot of time with, characters you know, characters you like. And will often in, result in you learning more about them and spending some time with them. So that can definitely, I think, help alleviate some of the less interesting side quests because instead of getting it from random short black haired buzz cut over here you get it from a character that you know like and have spent a lot of time and you learn more about them too and you'll have multiple side quests from the same character and again not always perfect but i do think that really does help even when they're at their most boring definitely makes it more palatable i'd say and as for what you do in the side quests you can probably guess it's Pretty much either talk to A, go to area B, kill some monsters or talk to some people, go back and report. That's, there's really not much variety here. Not that I would expect there to be. But they can give you new items like extra bag space, etc. I would say my biggest issue with side quests is they can drag. Like I'm talking, like they will talk to you for minutes. Which, again, I said it can be better because there are characters you like, but sometimes it's not. And even when they are characters you like, they might just blab on and on. Like, even when they've explained what the quest is, and you, you, you think, yeah, okay, I get it, I know what I'm supposed to do. They can just go four, five, six lines, and you, just, you can't help but think, shut the fuck up, I know what to do, stop talking. 
this is usually more of an issue when there's like four to five side quests come at a time and you guys have to talk to them all and then like fine i finally got through that enough to uh it can be a bit much and also uh, it's admittedly a nitpick this might only be something that bothers me specifically i don't know but i cannot stand the amount of fucking times they fade to black it's usually after you go back after doing something they ask you to do. You know, there's one, I, I, I don't want to spoil the story, but it's one side quest. A guy asks you to go check out what's wrong with the hot springs. Why is the water so hot? You go, there's bombs. You kill the bombs, things are fine. So you go back, report to the guy, and he asks, what happened? Now you would think they'd just say, oh, there were bombs heating up the spring. That, that sounds easy, right? That's one line to explain everything. Maybe two if you want to add a tiny bit. But no, it fades to black. Fades to black. Fades out. Oh, so that's what happened. I I get it. You don't want to have every side quest ending with five lines of dialogue, six maybe or more explaining what you just did a minute ago. I get it. But this happens way too frequently in this game. Like I've never noticed it happening this often in a game. It seems to happen way too much here. Especially like I said, most of them can be explained in one or two lines and it would be probably be faster. And in fact, one time they did do that. I can't even remember what it was, but it took one or two lines to explain. They did it instead of fading to black. I just, it just feels lazy, to be honest. And I wish they wouldn't do it. Or at least slightly less frequent. That's all I ask. Not a, the biggest deal in the world, but I, like I said, a nitpick that I noticed a lot. Just realised while I was doing something else. That's a much more appealing background. <laughs> instead of just having the thing barely seen. And the game torn out, that's much fucking better. Now, but back to it. So the biggest, I would say the biggest shift up this time around, in terms of the Final Fantasy franchise, this is an action game. No bullshit, no concessions to make it more appealing to the turn-based crowd, like 7 Remake or 15 had done. This is pure hack and slash kind of action. I'm all here for it. I like most, if not all, Final Fantasy battle systems. Even some of the ones that people aren't as much into, like 2 or 13, I love them. And But I will be honest, before I played this, I was absolutely neutral on it. It did nothing for me in the first trailer I saw. I thought it'd be fine in maybe other parts of the trailer or the game would pull me in. But it, it really surprised me a lot how much I ended up loving it. It is a fast-paced, chaotic, very varied blast. Fluid and satisfying as hell. And really went beyond all my expectations. At least at first. But we'll get to that in a little while. The combat shares a lot of similarities to Devil May Cry games. Which makes sense as they share the same battle designer. You press triangle to shoot a bit of an elemental blast. Similar to Dante's guns. And you use your sword for just regular attacks. attacks lunge attacks. Air juggling. All that good stuff. Extra power elemental attacks with cooldowns. And if you time it right, if you dodge it just the right time or do a parry, you can also have to slow time down and get a few free hits in. And returning from 13 into 7 Remake, which I've mentioned a couple of times already here, is the Stagger Gauges back. Which is basically if you do enough damage to an enemy, typically reserved for bigger enemies or bosses, you will reduce the Stagger Gauge and you will have a... Depending on the boss, depending on the enemy, you have about... Sometimes it's like between 10 and 15 seconds to just... Go nuts, he's incapacitated, you do as much damage you get as you can. With kind of a multiplier going up, not, uh, up from like 1.1%, 1.2%. You, you probably won't even notice it because it's so hard to keep track of in all the, with everything going on. But it's there and you do more damage. That's the base. If you play 13 or 7 Remake, you'll know what it is. Throughout the game, you also, uh, will also have different allies fighting alongside you. You, you don't control any, you only control Clive throughout the game. So, kind of like how allies in like the 7 remake would fight alongside you. They're there, they do their own thing, but you can't control them in this one. Or command them in any way or control them at all. And you also have Torgal, your dog, who actually, who can be kind of slightly controlled. You can press up, right, or down on the D-pad to have him attack, heal, or knock an enemy into the air. My only problem with Torgal, he's, I, of course, everyone loves Torgal, and I get it. My only issue is not with him, the, him himself, but it's how he's controlled. You see, you also have potions. You can send an item to the up, right and down on the d-pad. But you press left to switch between Torgle and then back. So press left to switch between Torgle and your po your healing items. Which is fine. It's all great. I love that. It's It works fine. My only issue here is 
when you restart the game, like if you turn it off for today and come back the next day, as long as you turn off the game, or even just at random points throughout the game itself, it will automatically switch back to the potions by default, even if you left it on Torgal. So there is, for me at least, there were many occasions, probably a good 10 or 15 throughout the game, where I would think, oh, Torgal, attack, 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 only to waste 4 or 5 potions. And because with Torgal, you don't always know where he is, what he's doing, and you want to keep, have him keep doing things, you might just tap the button a bunch of times, or you might want him to heal you a bunch of times, and you can waste all of your high potions, which were set to the same button as heal. Again, mostly fine, but I really hope they fix this, and keep it on the one you left it at. It's not the biggest deal in the world, but it is frustrating to just try to do a random at command, and boom. Big waste of items, gone. Just keep it where I left it, that's all I ask. I really hope more people are bothered by this, because if they're not, it won't change. That's the only thing I can think of, is to just leave it where you, on the, whatever you left it as, but... And I don't anticipate this changing, but... Like I said, not a huge deal, just, just a minor flaw. That would be greatly appreciated if they fixed. As you battle, you like, naturally level up, but also gain points that you can use to unlock new abilities. And honestly, I, I don't even have this written down, I'm just thinking about it now. This might be one of my favourite skill trees, in a lot of ways. Because it it's big, it is varied, you, and as you gain tr different elements throughout the game, like you'll see in the first trailer, for example, it, it's not just a palette swap, it's not just shooting a different element and everything else is the same, you'll get very varied attacks. Even the circle button, which originally is just a kind of a flaming dash, you will get things like pulling down your enemies towards you, counter attacks, but they're all varied, and that's what I really like. Like... Not just a palette or element swap, basically a different different type of game. You'll probably not see two people use exactly the same loadout, and it changes things a lot. When you have six of these that you can switch between, and three separate elements having the circle attacks, and each element having four or five different ones to choose from, there's a decent amount of replayability here, I think, as well. Obviously, you'll have your favourites, but I love the variety. That is one thing I have to appreciate a ton. And you also get something later on, it's called like a priming, we'll call it. Where you'll press the two sticks together, think Sparta Rage from God of War. You'll get stronger, you'll heal, you'll be faster. And it lasts until your meter runs out, which, you, which can be filled up by killing enemies or getting hit. It's basic stuff in a lot of ways, but it's really fun to use. Like I said, really fun and satisfying. All high energy and about 10 times better than I ever expected it to be. But only at first. I haven't really looked into other people's feelings about this yet. But I think the combat in this game is it doesn't take long to get way too easy. I played on action focused and no I didn't use any of those accessories that they give you at the start to make it easier like auto dodging or, or auto healing or any of that stuff. But it got to a point where most wild regular encounters almost became a formality. Sometimes I wouldn't even look I just gotta be looking at something else. I might be like, yeah, finish off, because you have an easy lock on, and which is great, obviously, but sometimes I just bear like that, just doing something else, not even really paying attention, and oh, cool, done. I think one of the biggest issues is that the enemies aren't really that smart or varied. If there's an enemy coming at you, one enemy left, and you keep shooting fireballs at it, people just keep getting staggered. Like, every time he tries to move, he just stagger back. They just really don't do enough to keep you on your toes. I mentioned already the elemental attacks, you, get si you can have six of these equipped at a time in the later game. In most encounters by the time you use six super powerful abilities, you're, you're pretty much done. Like the R2 and square attack that you get in one of the first abilities you have would, would be enough to kill an enemy in one hit. And even though there's cooldowns, by the time you use six of these, you're practically back. You're going to have at least one practically back to normal to be able to use again. You remember a lot of the mini bosses or stronger enemies with the stagger gauge? By the time you use six abilities on one of them, the stagger gauge is, is going to be pretty much down, and then you're going to have him nearly dead, and then you just repeat and he's gone. Then when you're factoring things like potions, the healing you get in priming mode, how fast that will fill up, up you're going to heal a lot of the damage you might have taken anyway. And if not, die. There's really no punishment for dying, you get all your potions and high potions back. Then you just move on, like nothing happened. And by the halfway point, I stopped upgrading and buying new equipment entirely. Sometimes I got new swords just because I like to see the new weapon, but 
I just wanted to feel like I was facing some kind of a challenge. I already mentioned I didn't use the auto accessories, like, like the automatic target attacks, or the auto dodging, the better potions, but I stayed away from accessories entirely. Because I didn't realise until like, like halfway through the game, I really thought they were in the same vein as the... Like, I thought they were just kind of... What, what's the word I'm looking for? I honestly thought it was just for people who like didn't want to focus on the action and needed the help from, from that kind of stuff. I thought they were all going to be stuff like that that would just automatically do things. But no, roughly halfway through, I realised they can do some like reduce cooldowns, raise attack, raise defence, just normal accessory stuff. But I didn't bother. Because at that point I had already gotten to the point where they, everything was too easy. Why would I bother making it easier if I was already bothered by the lack of difficulty? And this is made even worse by one of the most, one of the worst choices I've ever seen in a fucking game in my life. I wrote this, no, I wrote a good chunk of this review, like, like 70, 80% of the game. And this, and I'm not going to say what, the, I'm going to give us a score at the end. But I'm going to say it was a high into a certain number. And I was kind of struggling between two separate numbers. This brought it easily down and made me much more confident in in a low, in lowering into my final score by a little bit. If you click retry in this game into after in a boss fight, you cannot retry from the start of the boss. You click retry from the start of battle, you know what it does? It retries the boss fight, but the boss is put down to like half HP. If you want to fight the boss from the beginning with his full HP, you have to reload. What? You're fighting a big multi-stage boss fight and you're six stages in and you've died and you want to fight him from uh, with, uh, with like 25% HP? <laughs> Fuck you. You're starting from halfway through the fight and, or you can reload your save file and get back here yourself and go through all this again. I didn't even realise this until like good chunk through the game because, you know, easy, didn't die much. Until I was fighting a boss and I got into like a tiny bit of HP and then I was fighting him. I didn't even realise. I was like, his hit, his stagger, because the stagger gauge kind of adapts. You know, if it's up full and his HP is here, and you keep attacking, it's going to go down faster to kind of catch up. And I thought it was going down really fast, and then I saw, wait a minute, I've been fighting him for 10 seconds, and his HP is down to, like, less than half. That's when I realized that I hate this. This is one... They don't let you start the fight from the beginning. You can't do that. Who the fuck thought this was a good idea? No, really, I cannot comprehend this. D d don't skip half of the fight just because I fucking died. At least give me a choice. Please either add in a choice, a way to have a choice between starting from the fight or skipping half the fucking thing, or just get rid of it. Then, right after, I fired a boss again, died, realized he started off 75, roughly, percent of his HP. And, like, these were two back-to-back -back fights. I'm pretty sure if I wanted to start that battle again, then I would have had to do the previous boss fight. I just want to, like, don't do this. <laughs> like, I'm going to be honest here, I have a few flaws with this game, mostly small, admittedly, but I'm going to get into another one as well soon that really drew to one of my biggest ones in just a little while. But this is the only one that really took the wind out of my sails. I didn't, it, it killed my motivation. I didn't want to go on. I really didn't want to play anymore when I, when I realised this. If it wasn't for the fact I was near the end and I was wanting to do a review and all that and my overall love for Final Fantasy and the rest of the game, this could have made me stop in hope for a patch. At least This could have at least stopped. I genuinely think this. if I wasn't so late in the game, this would have made me stop and just wait to hope for a patch. Maybe I wouldn't have even finished it. Maybe this would have taken too long. This just, it just, it ruined the fun for me. Why should I give a shit up and try in a boss fight if I can just tap, 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 tap. Oh good, I got down to like 70% health. That's all I do. I'll die now and come back with all my potions. I could literally be like, do that. Just keep attacking. And then when I realize, oh, I'm nearly dead. Potions. Cool, I got down to less than half health. I can die now. I'll come back with all my potions. Start again from the middle. Which, again, would be fine if it was an option. But no. Or if they had all the saves before every boss fight, but they don't. There was one like six or six, like four, five, six stage boss fight, big, long, epic, story driven thing, happened to me in the last phase. I would have had to do it all again to go back. The flaw I'm going to get to in a sec that I didn't like 
admittedly drove me a bit more crazy because it's more consistent or at least was for me because like again easy game didn't die a lot in bosses so it's harder to notice but this is the only one that made me genuinely want to stop playing and it was just such an awful decision it just made me not even really want to go on i just felt a bit sad about it to be honest the only big exceptions i have to the lack of difficulty in this game is one the hunts or marks where you'll find posters, get a bit of information, go to the spot and fight kind of somewhat more powerful enemies, some just a little bit more powerful, some straight up S ranks who are honestly made the game a lot more bearable. I'll just show one, but some of these are so overbearing if you fight them a little too early, and I'm, I love it. Even in Final Fantasy XII, which was admittedly my least favourite Final Fantasy game, the hunts were my favourite thing about it. Every time I think about wanting to go back to that game, it's because I want to do some of them. They were the absolute best part of that game for me. And again, even in a game I overall really like a lot more, they're still one of my favourite things. So that should say a lot about how much I enjoy these. And I love the fact that you can fight them when you're too weak for them too, when you're probably not going to beat them unless you're a fucking expert. That is genuinely one of my favourite mechanics in games when they do it. It's, it doesn't happen a lot, but when they do, when they let you fight an enemy that you're most likely not going to beat, get thrashed. Then you go back when you're a bit more powerful. Try again. Get a little bit closer. And then eventually you beat them and it's the most satisfying. You really feel good about it. And it's a rare treat that doesn't happen a lot. But the off chance that they do. I think it's one of the most exciting fun things in games when they do it. It brings me back to the dark Aeon days of Final Fantasy X. And, and I promise you when, from me. That is one of the best compliments you can possibly get. If it reminds me of my favourite game of all time, and one of my favourite things in my favourite game of all time, you've done something good by me. The other exception to this game being having battles that are a bit too easy, boring, pointless, are the actual story boss battles. They are longer, tougher, bigger, more varied, and I always look forward to them. They are always more of a treat, and obviously I'm not going to spoil anything, but one of the later boss battles in this game, holy fuck, one of my best, probably like one of my top 10 boss fights in in all of gaming. <laughs> Genuinely one of the most jaw-dropping fucking spectacles I've ever seen. I know I've used that word a few times, but it is the only word I can really think to use. Like I said, I won't spoil which one, but if you want to leave a comment, to, if you want to leave a comment to guess which one it might have been, feel free to drop your guess below. If you've played it, you probably know... Just make sure to leave a few gaps or some spoiler warning just so people won't have the thing ruined for them. Other than that, guess away. The boss fights in this game are larger than life and sometimes I mean literally. They can really just throw everything at you. Again, sometimes literally. And push you to your absolute limit. And at some point in the game, they really just became the thing I was looking forward to the absolute most. They really just pushed me on to want to play more. And without some of these unbelievable boss fights i really think a lot of my interest and my love for this game would have dropped significantly but while we're on the topic of boss fights it brings me to it <laughs> so quick story when i was playing this at first i wasn't sure if i was going to do a review i wasn't sure if i was going to talk about this publicly much at all it's hard for me to be objective when it comes to final fantasy i'll admit it Especially with the first new game in the franchise after seven years. I don't want to admit problems. I want it to be perfect. I wanted it to blow me away every step of the way and just be the best thing in the world. Could I really be unbiased? <laughs> and when I got to a certain gameplay mechanic, it was the first time I thought, yeah. Yeah, I knew I needed to let this out. Like I said earlier, none of my friends who care about Final Fantasy have played much of it. I don't have anyone to vent about this to, so <laughs> skip ahead to. I'm gonna leave. I'm genuinely gonna leave a timestamp in the description, just if you want to skip ahead, because this is a gameplay mechanic that pissed me off so bad. It might get a bit unhinged. Just a fair warning. I cannot exaggerate how much this thing pissed me off. It set me on many rants right in this spot to myself, and it genuinely rattled me to my core. And I don't even know why. In fact, I think I'm just going to go off script here and just go for it. The biggest problem for me in this game, the thing that pissed me off the most, are the quick time events. Now, before I say anything, let me clarify. I don't hate quick time events. I think I'm not one of the people who are as against them as a lot of people are. I do genuinely think they can be done well and they can really elevate a, a boss battle, especially boss battles. Therefore, it can be really the best for. 
games like God of War, Sewer is Rat, Heavy Rain even. I really think these games all do it really well. Well, Heavy Rain does it to make cool action sequences in a slower paced story game. God of War, they usually do it in a lot of ways to kind of move on to the next stage of a boss fight. You know, you might tear off an arm or a tooth and that kind of pattern and you keep going. As Tour's Wrath, I think, does it really well to make these quick time event cutscenes a lot more epic. Like, when you tap a button a bunch of times, there's like two things clashing together. I genuinely think it can be a fucking cool way of showcasing a struggle between two forces hitting each other. When the screen's just flashing, it's like two things, two giant fucking fists or something. I really do like them a lot when they're done right. Here, but this is without a doubt the worst implementation of quick time events I've ever fucking seen. In fact, even, even calling them quick time events it is only to do for it with convenience and what tradition, I guess, what they are actually called. Because they are not quick. I swear, the way I've likened it, you could hand a controller to your fucking grandparent who's never played a game drive and say, hey, push the button on the screen. Like, oh, okay. Oh, um. Oh, that one. Not exaggerating. You have like five or six seconds. It's just a fist will come at you and then circle on the screen. It just, it, it grinds everything to a halt. Like, I understand not liking the cute quick time events. I get it. I understand not wanting to fail a cutscene because you didn't notice a flash on the screen. I can get that. I can appreciate that. But this just seems like a shitty middle ground. What's the point in having them there if you, realistically, there's no way you're going to fit? If anybody failed one of these quick time events because they weren't just checking their phone or like, oh, fuck. A, or something or they dropped their controller I'll be shocked I don't know how you could fail these there are times when I'm just sitting there like oh quick time event it's the equivalent to somebody grabbing the controller off you pausing the game and handing it back to you with how long you have could you not if you're not going to implement them in any way that makes sense and has any value to gameplay just don't do it have it be a cutscene I've, I've said before it almost feels condescending like, no, 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 you're doing that. You you did that. Look, no, no, it's not a cutscene. You press square. You, you're you doing that. That's you. No, it's not. <laughs> I, I'm like, okay. There's a whole stage of a boss fight where it's nothing but quick time event. You're just watching this kind of cool cutscene that I honestly think is being held back by the fact they have to make it occasionally with a quick time event. Their cutscenes are just like icon and icon battles that look epic as fuck and a lot of times when they do the ones with the quick time events it they don't hold up and even the ones like i mentioned where you can have a clash against each other it can be really epic because you're just tapping the button you feel like you kind of feel the struggle in this game you press like six or seven times and you're done with the ugliest interface i've ever seen i'm sorry if you have me tap the button when two things are forcing against each other and i can't see the screen because you have the ugliest shit covering it that's not good i don't like that i can't even tell what's going on in half of these like, what is on the screen now? It's somebody who maybe hasn't played the game. Can you tell me what's happening right now? Go on. Leave a guess. Leave a fucking guess. And like I said, I already said a whole section of a boss, basically a one icon against another, is done in quick time events. It's like 10 seconds of cutscene. Move on. And that's why I feel like it's a shitty middle ground. It doesn't have the attention grabbing focus and energy of a real quick time event where you have to be kind of ready and focused at all times and it doesn't have the relaxing nature of just a regular cutscene we can lie back and enjoy it, it seems like a shitty middle ground <sighs> oh that felt good <laughs> that genuinely felt good <laughs> oh that fucking maybe i'm alone in this i actually haven't looked into it yet because I, I i like to make my own opinion first i'd probably do it right after i finish this I want to see if I'm alone. But I really think I just prefer loo- I think I prefer dying in a cutscene five times in this- Oh, God. And again, for me, these are the worst implementation of quick time events ever. Nothing has ever come close for me. Even Uncharted 1 that has three random quick time events. If you miss, you die. <laughs> That's so ineptly done, it's funny. Like, you can't see somebody failing one of those cutscenes or those quick time events on Uncharted 1 just die because they, like I said, there's like three of them over the course of 12 hours. It's shit, but it's funny. It's funny because it's so fucking stupid that you can't help but laugh. And again, it's, and Uncharted 1 is like 20 years old. So you can kind of at least 
excuse that a little bit. Quick time events are new. What the fuck is this? Okay, not going back into it. Moral of the story. Either have them be there for a purpose as actual gameplay or an actual thing to make it better. Or don't have them at all and just be a cutscene. I don't feel more engaged because I press on your 6 second fucking quick time event every once in a while, okay? But they do usually happen during icon battles where some of the most colossal larger than life epic battles I've ever seen, so... I guess it evens out. And yeah, these quick time events, these were the first time where I got so annoyed and... <laughs> ranty. That I knew I was going to probably do this. But then the good thing that happens in Mar Martha's Rest where... In the nice open field, the beautiful music playing. I had something really bad to talk about. I had something absolutely beautiful to talk about. So, in your own way, these things kind of came together in a beautiful harmony of shit and gold. To make me know I had to talk about, just to get out this, just, just to let it out. I genuinely feel better. Another little fire, a thing I really, really don't like in this. And it happens a lot with hunts or bigger enemies, typically. Where they have this really stupid flaw. If you go ever so slightly outside of a certain boundary. The enemy will just scutter back. Full HP. You can be fighting enemy for 4 or 5 minutes. And that's out of nowhere he decides no I'm leaving. Now look. I know you, you probably think. You, you might think I'm exaggerating. Like maybe okay I went way too far. I tried to run to the other side of the map. I tried to go way. No I'm talking about the tiniest bit away. It seems that some of the hunts have this like tiny green line less than the size of my finger. And if you go outside of that, they just leave. But thankfully I got this video to make me realise I wasn't losing my mind and just fucking up myself. Here I am fighting a spy this spider creature. And look, I'm hitting him. I'm attacking him. And w w what's this? I didn't move forward at all. And all of a sudden he walked back to full health. What the fuck is this? Look, people hate invisible walls, but I'll take invisible walls in a battle over this shit any day. Don't do this. The only acceptable ways for enemies, as far as I'm concerned, to go back and get full HP is if I go really far away, or you warn me, or at least give me some kind of indicator. You're not like a fucking green line the less than half the size of my finger. Have like a line that's like that big, and if, you go, if you're in the middle, I don't know anything but this. Wow, Velistia fell. I swear I fought one enemy three times, beca kind of, because like halfway through he just decided, no, I'm going back to heal. Just, and the worst part is, he goes down, like the, H the HP bar disappears, it just vanishes kind of, and then he just walks back full HP. There's nothing you can do to stop it. I, I just don't get how they thought this was okay. Don't have enemies run away to heal, please. Look, it is admittedly rare. But still, please don't do this. Either have a very clear area of where I'm not allowed to leave, or some kind of invisible wall, anything. This is not it. <laughs> Even a timer, like, oh, you're five seconds away from being too far. Anything. Just something. I've never seen this happen in a game like this in my life. So there must be better ways. It's just so demotivating and frustrating to go oh, like four or five minutes into a boss or battle. And then you just see him slowly walking back. And you can't do shit. But other than all that, it is definitely a lot of fun to play around with the battle system. And I genuinely think if I had given this a review in the first like 10 hours, 15 hours, it would have been so much of a higher... It would have been so much better for me. I would have had way more praise. If one, when I got the second element, elemental abilities, I had done this and had a few goals with that, this would have definitely been a way more glowing section. Because that would have also been before the quick time events. Anyway. <coughs> anyway, in, in between the mandatory story and the battles you'll be doing, you'll spend a lot, generally spend a lot of time at your hideout. Where you'll have, like, sometimes there'll be side quests here, your allies will all be here hanging around doing their own thing. And they'll also have your general JRPG necessities, you know, your, your blacksmiths, your shop, your little collectible stuff, and a jukebox. Which is a trend I am genuinely loving in Final Fantasy lately. Keep putting in radios and jukeboxes and stuff like that, I love it. It's definitely a modern Final Fantasy trend I can get behind. Very much so, between 15 and 7 remaking this one, please no, don't stop. 
And there's also little things like reading letters or catching up in information like stuff from the active time report that's all saved in a glossary. Stuff like that. And map traversal is done with kind of like an overworld map. They'll mark an icon uh, where you'll have a little marker on the map. You click there, you fast travel. You know, there's like one there and there and, and there. <laughs> And then you just fast travel. I know a lot of people might not like this, but I think it's okay because when you do fast travel to an area, it's generally a big expanse of land. I'm sure some will be disappointed by it, but I'm personally okay with it. I don't mind it. My only complaint about the my my only weird little complaint about the map, and by that I mean a complaint about a weird bit of game design here. There are some times where every location on the map will be locked off except for one, and you're forced to go there. Now I I know what you're probably thinking. Sometimes that's going to happen in a story. Sometimes they're going to force you to go somewhere. But no, I mean that you will have to go to one spot. And the instant you load in, and I literally mean the second, before any cutscene, any dialogue happens, you go into the map screen again, you can go anywhere you want. So let's just say, that's the only spot in the map you can go to. Everywhere else has a big X on it. You go here, instantly press start, go out to the map, Everywhere is free again. Why? No, re really, why? I, I cannot... I would be less bothered if I did have to do something more significant to unlock the places again. But at least that would make it feel more, more like, reasonable. <laughs> if, like, a friend came into your house and you said, you're not allowed in any room except the kitchen. And then he walked into the kitchen and you said, fine, now you can go wherever you want. It's, it's, that's the only thing, like, way I can explain it. And another little thing, you can't save on the world map. Which I really don't understand. I really don't like that. Because sometimes the only, you're, you might be done, you might not trust where the autosave was, you don't know where it autosaved. So you have to click on a place, and that might result in cutscenes instantly. So you think, you, you think you're going to leave, not 10 minutes of cutscenes later, you might, you're might you in a hurry, you just want to save, just want to turn it off. No. Add a fucking save point to the fucking ma map. Come on. <laughs> I should clarify, there are sections after you finish a big area where you be put onto the map screen because you have left that area and you can only go to one place, for example. And then that will have story. That's what I mean by because you're not in a location where you went to the map, you're just on the map. I hope that made a shred of sense. But speaking of the world in general, I, there's one thing I do have to say, and this is a huge praise, especially for me. One thing I genuinely love about this game. But when you are in the world... It is genuinely beautiful, usually very appealing, because on top of the because on top of the great environment, music, and and just general everything around you, people can shut the fuck up. One thing that does really bother me a lot about a lot of modern games: you cannot do anything for five fucking seconds or somebody yelling at you. But look, I'm out. Exp I'm out looking at this beautiful open area. And nobody's talking. Nobody has a word to say. They're just letting me look around without yelling at me. Nobody's reminding me where to go or what to do. Who are trying to be funny. And look, I'm in a battle. And there's an on-screen indicator telling me that there's an enemy behind me about to attack. And nobody's yelling at me. Cough, cough, god of war. It's... It's beautiful. It's so unbelievably refreshing. I'm, it, it can get me. It can almost genuinely get me a little bit emotional. It's, it's. I could get used to this. I know I'm probably not going to, but boy, I could get used to this. And while we're on the topic, sorta, the last thing I will get into is the music. One of my favorite things to talk about in any game I play, especially when it's good, even if I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, I just gen I just really love people to praise the good music in games, especially with Final Fantasy. And being a Final Fantasy, as you can probably expect, the music is it's naturally going to be just amazing. From epic boss music to genuinely some of the most blood pumping, hype inducing tracks out there.
just serene music when you're out in the nature of the game. There are some parts in this game where I would just leave it playing in the background. Where I'd just be doing something else and I kind of just forget it there. Because it was just so relaxing and nice to just listen to in the background. It's honestly some of the most relaxing music I've ever heard at times. Especially some of the music that plays in a place called Drake's Breath. Without a doubt. One of the most beautiful pieces of music I've ever heard. Maybe my top 10 Final Fantasy tracks out there. Which I don't think I need to tell you is a high fucking praise. Where it was just like this perfect church organ-y. Just kind of churchy organ piece. It's just, it makes you feel like 20 different things at once. It's all in full swing. And like I already said with the appreciated mechanic of the jukebox which you can buy new music for as you play the game you get them generally by completing story quests or com and they'll have them in like certain towns as well to buy for an exorbitant amount of money a at least at first I'm gonna guild kind of became meaningless and very quickly in this game but I do appreciate the mechanic when you have to buy music and the jukebox you can shift the music for the hideout at any time just by going over and just that's it you just change the song and there's a quite a good selection here again very appreciated mechanic keep it up my only issue with this is when you get new music that or when anything new in the hideout appears it'll have a little uh a little yellow mark next to it to show there's something new there but as far as i can tell unless i'm missing something with the jukebox it only tells you that you have new music it doesn't tell you which one is new so unless you remember the name of every piece of music you get that that you get or write it down somewhere like, if you buy two new pieces of music and then get two in the story without checking back, you're not going to know which one is new. Th these aren't, like, recognisable old Final Fantasy themes that you're going to know the name. Like, you're not getting, like, one winged angel stuff here that you're going to know the name of and you're obviously going to know is new. They, ooh, they, just, they tell you that there is a new song, but not which one. I really don't get why everything else seems to do this fine. Like, you get letters throughout the game to tell you which letter is new. I might be missing something, admittedly. I don't think I am. But it's something I really hope they can fix. And overall just some phenomenal tracks throughout the whole game. And I've had one of the boss themes playing in my head for like the past two days. So that's been fun. So overall I have to admit it's a hard one to gauge my feelings on. The story can be great. Great, epic, emotional and the characters can be very compelling. But again it can be very padded especially in the second half. I do think the story could have been cut at least a good 10 hours personally. Especially some of the stuff that feels like side quests. The battle system blew me away with how much I liked it. Which which before going in was my biggest reservation. And the hunts and boss fights were next level amazing sometimes. But in terms of regular combat things, especially in like, I'd say the, the, the last two thirds. Things are pretty average and repetitive with the battle system in regular encounters. At best. The world is absolutely beautiful at times, but can really be dragged down with how drab and foggy things in dark it can get. It's 
it's kind of like that line about every silver lining having a cloud, to be honest. Except the graphics and music. Absolutely no negatives there. Like, at some points in this game, I honestly felt like a kid, an excited kid again. When I was watching the opening a few hours of this game, I was I was like an inconsolable, excited child on Christmas. While I wasn't the big fan of something like Final Fantasy XV, the summons in that were some of the best jaw-dropping parts, and this game exceeded that easily. But if I'm going to be honest with myself and try to ignore that feeling inside my heart that tells me that I want Final Fa a new Final Fantasy game to be the best thing ever, I have to admit that that excitement did not carry through. And the quality from the first few hours did not carry through either. I can easily see somebody who only played the first half of this game giving it a phenomenal score compared to mine. But sometimes this game was hard to play for more than a couple of hours, sometimes even less than that. My final verdict for Final Fantasy 16. The final verdict for, for Final Fantasy 16 is going to have to be a 7 out of 10. Now don't get me wrong, it's a high 7. If I was going to give this like out of 100, it'd probably be like a 77 or 78 kind of area. Except that's a lie. I wrote that line before I experienced the the flaw of not being allowed to restart a boss fight without being having half dead. So now my score has gone to a very comfortable 7. Very solid 7. I just can't go higher with some of these flaws, especially between the quick time events, the dying part. They're the two biggest ones for me. Again, other stuff like I mentioned, like the enemies crawling outside of the battle, padded stuff. I can't go higher. I really, I'd love to be able to. I, you cannot. I wanted to like this more, and I do genuinely love it. There are just certain things holding it back for me. Fix the worst QTEs I've ever experienced in a game ever. You know, let me reach my bosses from the start, you know bring this the checkpoint system in terms of that up to, up to the standards of 2007 and i can easily see this re reaching like an eight a bit of a better difficulty more varied enemy tactics and a bit of a less padded story i could easily see this being like a nine or a ten admittedly i haven't tried new game plus yet but you know if i think if you need to complete a good 60 70 hour jrpg to get to things being good to get to the battle system being really good I do think that'd be a problem in itself, and it wouldn't change my feelings at all. I think it would just kind of, yeah, give me one new thing that's good, but also be a bad thing. So it would pretty much balance out. Now, I can easily see the people liking this a lot more than I do. A few of those flaws might be very specific to me. I, again, I'll find out very soon. <laughs> but I can also easily see other people hating this compared to me. If you don't like the battle system, and not like if you're not okay with Final Fantasy going with this action-focused thing... And the story didn't do much for you. I can't imagine you having anything with anything even resembling a close or good time. But thankfully the prologue, the first like two, three hours, is available on demo. So anyone with a PS5 can check it out anyway, without having to commit. And honestly, I like I probably said, I think if I had given this a review based on just the demo, like the first three hours, this could have reached a 10. Because that's before all of the biggest problems were really kind of rare their ugly head. But, yeah, that's it for Final Fantasy 16. It's kind of sad to say we probably won't see another mainline Final Fantasy for many years, probably till at least 2028, and that's been optimistic. But despite that, I do think it is generally a good time to be a Final Fantasy fan. With the Pixel remasters coming out last year on PS4, and I think a bit earlier on other, some other, th other things like Steam and Switch, making every Final Fantasy game from 1 to 16 available on PS5, bearing 11, 11 which is an MMO, and of course 13, because they won't fucking give it to us yet. Fuck sex, square, give it to us. I'm sick of waiting for that every fucking event. <laughs> Just, it's been too long. Just... Why would you have every mainline Final Fantasy single player game available on a console, but not this one? Personally, I blame 13 2 and Lightning Returns. They probably just don't want to do one and not the others, and that might be a lot more work. Off topic, doesn't matter right now. Release it. I'll just stew in my anticipation for it to finally come out again. But there's also the 7 Remake, Stranger of Paradise, 16. And with 7 Remake Part 2 allegedly releasing in early 2024... Or Crisis Core releasing this year, or just a few about six months ago. Even things like Ever Crisis looking pretty good, especially for mobile game standards. And 14 still going on incredibly strong. Maybe just the biggest MMO at the moment. Definitely one of the biggest. There's a lot lately. Is it all great for everybody? No. 
But is there something there? Is it varied? Hell yeah. I really do think it's one of the best times in a very long time to be a fan of this franchise. And as somebody who has had it near and dear to my heart since I was literally before I could, could even read properly, that makes me really happy. So despite any flaws I had, it truly was a joy to finally get to play another mainline Final Fantasy game. And it really has made the PS5 a pleasure to own. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you thought of the game. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you a fan of the franchise before? And is this your first one? That's, and if it is, allow me to welcome you in. I hope you liked it at least enough to check out some of the other games. There are a lot of amazing games, worlds, stories and characters awaiting you. I'm almost jealous. But I definitely hope this created a few new fans. That, if, if nothing else, that would be that would definitely be a great outcome. Feel free to subscribe and like or comment, all that good stuff. It apparently helps. Thanks, thanks once again for watching. I really do appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Come to watch me rant and gush about something that really is important to me. Final Fantasy is just my favorite media franchise of anything. It's the only franchise that always is guaranteed to get a reaction out of me. Even while others come and go, this is the one that stuck with me. And even now, I do think it's a franchise that really changed my life. It helped me connect with my brother, with friends. Even current people I'm becoming involved with is all because of Final, a Final Fantasy game. I really can't imagine how different my life would be without this. And that's why I'm always happy to check more out. And that is all. I'm probably going to release like an updated ranking video, the Final Fantasy ranking video, because... I did it like well for the anniversary six months ago, so I'll throw that in somewhere. I don't know where it's gonna go yet. I'm gonna have to really, I'm gonna have to soul search to figure that out. But I've rambled enough. It's just what happens when I get talking about this fucking franchise. <laughs> so yeah, thanks you one last time for watching. It's the third time now, and I'll see you for the next one. See you then.